V, uh, uh, the new V. Okay. And I'm telling you, that is not only significant, it's mind-blowing when I give you the whole story. <laughs> ABC and Disney are telling you something about this symbol that I've been looking out for a long time and it's going to be right in your face because I'm telling you that symbol is going to become the most important symbol around the globe for the first time in the public view. Anytime you want to do research on the hidden stuff like I've done, it's everywhere. But no, now because of Obama, now the secret societies of the, what I think are extraterrestrial masters of this world are going to bring this symbol out into the world so everyone can see it. And eventually what, uh, what's going to happen is that the whole human race is going to wake up, and this is what my opinion about 2012, my opinion of 2012 is going to be an awakening for the whole world we've been had. They're going to see this as an ancient thing that's been coming for a long time and we never, we never saw it, we didn't understand it, but when my video comes out that I want to do, it's going to be like a three hour step by step on Obama's symbol, Jimmy Carter, all the presidents, the Bushes, the entire superstructure of Western civilization and what this stuff really means and where it really comes from, I think, and I'm not, I'm not, being, I'm not trying to aggrandize myself, but I really believe that it's going to cause quite a sensation when people see what I really have that I've never told anyone before because it's, and, and when I see Obama using the same terms, the same symbol, the same one that the communists use, the Nazis have used, the fascists have used, the secret societies around the world of Freemasonry have used, the Babylonians, as I said, all the ancient Egyptians, they all use the same word, term, and symbol. And now ABC is coming out Disney ABC is coming out with a new remake of V and in it the extraterrestrials that look like humans who are bringing a quote new order to the world and the pamphlet in the movie is called Dawn of a New Day. I was said, wow, I cannot believe how overwhelmingly obvious this secret symbol is now becoming. And but that's why told? I want to do this video on it. But were you told more about the movie, more about, you know, where they're going with it? In other words, I'm assuming you haven't seen it. No, no, I haven't seen it yet. But I, I, I watched the other ones so many times. And the other ones, uh, if you remember in the original, the visitors, they were wonderful people. They were, they were very gracious and, and charming. And then remember the lady who was in charge of the visitors? She was the highest ranking she went into a room and pulled off her face it was a reptile alien yes i personally i brought david ike to america he was in america because i brought him here personally yes and so i'm saying that i am totally convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt for myself that there are such things as reptile aliens though i have never seen one thank god but I totally believe they are here, not because of David Icke, not because of Krito Mutwa, who I love listening to, a wonderful, fascinating man. David Icke has done great stuff. But I believe uh, extra, there are reptile alien, aliens here because of my own personal research. I have been in the company of at least eight people and over my over the past many years, eight different people, each one is extraordinarily well grounded people. Airline pilot one, uh, with a major airlines, uh, a very wealthy man in Las Vegas who buys and sells commercial hotels, buildings, etc. Extremely wealthy man, uh, Christian, incidentally. Very Christian man, but very, very wealthy, a very highly intelligent man. 
sat down and told me about his personal one-on-one -on -one with a reptile alien in which many others in his church were privy to see. That's a whole story in itself. That happened in, in Colorado. Uh, and then to have a scientist um, and, and, a, and a young lady who was one of my favorite people in the world, a young lady called Nancy, who just blew me away and on my radio show. I used to have a show. I've had seven different radio shows in my life. I'd like to get back on radio and do my own show again. But I had a show on KPFK uh, here in Los Angeles, FM station. And one night I had uh, uh, Nancy on. And Nancy just blew the audience away. She is so feminine, so incredibly charming and feminine girl, talking about stuff that will blow your mind. <laughs> Her father was uh, in the Air Force, uh, a family with Air Force, but her father was in charge of project retrievables for the Air Force. The man who was in charge of going out wherever in the world the, any extraterrestrial activity, he was in charge in the Air Force to go there first. And he was the boss. And she said, and, and, the, and the modus operandi was always the same. And, and, and I'll have to make you a copy of her. Two, I got two two-hour interviews that Love will just to knock you out. Um, and you could tell this is a very charming girl, but telling you stuff that you're going to have to sit down to deal with. <laughs> and she said her father, wherever they would go, she always lived on military bases. And she said, and always the method was the same. There was one phone in the house for the family, and then there was another phone which no one ever touched. You never used it. And when that phone would ring, no matter when, two in the morning, three in the morning, it doesn't matter. If that phone rang, her father had 10 minutes to be fully dressed with his briefcase and ready to go. And in 10 minutes, a car would pull up and nothing was said. No voices, no nothing was said. A knock on the door, he would walk out, he would have military escort him to the car, get in the car and drive off, and that's it. Nobody knows where he's gone, and nobody needs to know. And so she said in many a night, they would get that phone ring, he would get up, dress, briefcase, ready to go, and they would take him somewhere in the world where something has just happened, and the Air Force was sending him to see what, what, had, what just happened, and they're in charge. And she would tell me the things that her father, especially her mother, she said the father would never tell, would never tell her anything when she was a child, but the mother you know, would tell her later on in life. She told me an experience that just blew my mind about a reptile alien, and you really have to hear it from her. But she basically the story, and it's so fascinating, I've got to tell you, she said, she said her father would never allow her to be left alone in the house ever. When he would go off during the day, they live on base. They live on base. Doesn't matter. When he would leave the house, immediately uh, military would come and guard all four corners of the property. They would sit there in, car, uh, in cars and guard while he's gone. Anywhere. Uh, if he went to the market or whatever, they would be guarding the house. <clears throat> and he would never allow her to stay at home by herself. And so she said one night, and you'll hear this interview, she said one night, it wasn't on base, they were here in Los Angeles somewhere, <clears throat> and she said that uh, her mom and dad were going next door to a, uh, to a party next door, and she asked her dad if she could stay, stay, and she was like 13, 14 years old, and he said no, absolutely not. So she talked to her mother, and the mother talked to the father, and got him to agree to, that she could stay home. And so she said, so for the first time in her life, she was actually going to be alone in the house by herself. And she said, so she was in a bedroom, she said, combing her hair, and she had a mirror that she could see her closet, and the closet had French doors. And she said they were closed, partially closed, and it wasn't too uh, well lit in the, in the room. She said she was combing her hair, looking at the closet door, and all of a sudden the closet door opened up, and a reptile alien stepped out. And she said he had to bend down to get under the header, and he
up, she said it was a full grown man, extremely muscular, but it was a reptile body, reptile alien head. And she said, this thing looked at me and I'm looking at it in the mirror. And she said, he started moving toward me without moving his legs. He was just floating toward her slowly. And she said, I felt like it was like coming up on a fly. He was, you know, grabbing quick. And she said she jumped up and screamed and ran down the hallway, ran into the bathroom, locked the door, opened the window, and started screaming. Of course, everybody in the neighborhood heard, she said, and when I heard, and he, this reptile alien, she said, came down the hallway, and I could feel that, uh, him walking because he was so heavy. And he was scraping on the door, growling like a dinosaur growl, scraping on the door. <clears throat> and she said that when her father and, and the neighbors come running up, they open the door. When they come running up, they were yelling outside. This reptile alien ran back down the hallway into her bedroom and disappeared. She said when her father came in, the, the, the bathroom door was just ripped and Obviously, the father said he was not going to hurt her, but it was a message. And he said, that's why I never wanted her to stay alone. Because these aliens have told us, the Air Force, that you keep poking your nose into our business. Every time something happens, you come out and poke your nose. So we just want you to know, the next time something happens, and you poke your nose into our business, while you're out here poking your nose into our business, some of us are going to come visit your daughter. So you, you need to stay home and stay out of our business. And so he said, so that's why they always had military around any time he left. And so when she was telling me this story about other reptile aliens, and of course I've heard it from so many legitimately important people uh, I have to believe that there is something to this story. I have personally not seen one, but I don't want to. <laughs> but I've seen enough to know that there are life forms on this earth which are not from here. I've already seen too much to know that. Um, my experiences have been extraordinary, as I said. 36 major experiences I've had in my life where I've dealt with other world uh, phenomena. So, I don't okay. know. Okay, well, this is, this is a really amazing interview. Um, can you talk at all about anything else that you think that people should know in terms of the overall picture that you've been giving them here? I, um, would, say, I would say be aware that there is a war for your soul. There is a war for the spiritual... You know, there's always been this question for thousands of years, all the great philosophers ask it, about whether we are physical bodies which have a spirit in it, or are we originally a spirit which has taken on a physical body? You know, I mean, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, but I am, I am convinced that uh, no matter how it happens, if we were physical and took on a spirit, I or maybe we were a spirit and took on a physical body. I believe that there is a war going on from somebody out there that was an original enemy of whoever created us. So whoever created us has enemies out there in the universe and that are diabolical enemies. And we know this is, is true in government. You know, you, you may see the president and the, and the first lady and all of that. And it's very prom and proper, but they have enemies, powerful enemies. That's why they have to be totally surrounded by military and protection, because they have serious enemies. Something happened to me that tells me that there's something going on like that. I was in Hawaii many years ago with my wife and some friends. We went to Hawaii for the first time. And I was sitting in a restaurant across the street from the Hilton Village. And in the restaurant, which is a main drag, a main strip, and uh, I was sitting with my back to the door. And someone came in, and I immediately had an electrical charge go through my body. It's bad enough being shocked by, a, by a, the wall plug, but if you don't know it's coming, it's even worse. 
and I was sitting at the table talking and all of a sudden somebody came in and an electrical shock went through me and I knocked the stuff on the table. I knocked water and stuff on, on the table and I jumped up and I, 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 involuntarily I just jumped up and something told me run quick you're in trouble you're going to die run quick and I ran out the back door of the restaurant ran across the restaurant left my wife and my friends and ran across the, 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 the restaurant ran out the back door and the voice said run quick you're in trouble go across the street to the hotel and I screamed I remember yelling I can't go across the street it's a main you know there's, there's traffic out there and it said run there will be no traffic run and so I ran out into the street involuntarily. I wasn't even, I was not making a conscious decision to do any of this. It was being foisted on me. And I ran across the street and as it so happened, there was no traffic for that little stretch. I ran out and it said, go out around the hotel. The voice would say, run quick to the hotel. And I ran around the hotel and it said, all right, you're safe now. Now you're safe. And I sat down, my heart was pounding. And I kept thinking, what did I just do? And how am I going to explain this to my wife and my friends? What I just did, involuntarily. I don't know what happened. That happened to me twice. The second time was a few months later in Los Angeles. I was on the corner of Fairfax and Wilshire Boulevard in a little coffee shop called Johnny's uh, Hamburger Stand. It's a little restaurant. I was sitting at the counter. And I noticed peripheral vision. I didn't look over to see them. But peripheral vision, I saw two guys walk in. And as I walked in, immediately an electrical shock hit me. I almost fell out. I was at the counter. And the voice said, get out quick. You're in trouble. Run. And so I grabbed a bunch of money, threw it on the counter, and tripped, trying to get out of the, out of the chair on the, on the counter. I got up, and I hit the side door and I ran north on Fairfax and the voice kept saying run your life is in danger run quick and I ran about two or three blocks until I was just about out of breath and then the voice said alright you're safe now you're safe now sit down and I sat down my heart was pounding again and it was involuntary I didn't make a conscious choice to run I just I just started running and the voice was talking, was yelling to me. It was actually like a yell. Move quick, your life is in danger. So it happened twice to me. I have no idea what that all means. It just, I'm just telling you what happened. Okay, so, so you are, are positing the fact that there is a symbol, that in the symbol is basically um, uh, telling the world of a new world order and, and the return or the, the, the basically uh, a son taking control yeah. and that this is happening sometime in the near future yeah. and I'm assuming you think around 2012 is that correct yeah that's what I think okay and then you're talking also about um, really reptilians and and an agenda which yeah. is not quite clear but there's something going on with that's that. Right. Mm -hmm. so what I'm now asking you is whether or not that so-called king is reptilian well I don't know and what I would say to an audience that's watching this <clears throat> I've said it too many times before but I think it bears saying again I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything I'm just telling you what I have seen with my own eyes what what has happened to me in my life but I would also say to anyone who would scoff at this just look at what I have to offer first before you make a decision if I'm crazy or not see what I have amassed in the past 40 years that I haven't told you that, that you don't know that I have and see the, the, the research that I have done on this subject of this new order of the world which I started talking about back in 1960 I was sending uh, letters to uh, Bo Belmont uh, Massachusetts back in 1960 Belmont Massachusetts I was sending letters to the John Birch Society who had just been formed in 1959 and the John Birch Society was of course exposing all the communist 
uh, activity in the world, especially in America. I was already well into all of that in 59 when they started. And so I started sending them articles that I, uh, things like, well, you need to look at this symbol and this word and this term here. And also you might want to look at this, this guy and this organization. So I was sending them little tidbits of information back in 1960 on the subject of Illuminati on, on secret societies, not Illuminati. Because the Illuminati I found out about, like I said, in 1967 when Anthony Hilder produced uh, the series of records of three 33 and a third record albums called Illuminati. The man speaking was an incredibly interesting uh, man named Myron Fagan. And I don't know if you've ever heard Myron Fagan's Illuminati record. It will knock you out. Absolute today, it's still a knockout. Wow. And when I hear it today, I heard it 40 years ago. When I hear it today, it's still a mind blower. Um, I have a question for you that is a little bit moving on onto another topic. It has to do with the Illuminati, but I wonder if you would address it. What is the significance of merging the red and the black? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it's called red and black and white, all three, red, black and white, are referred to in Hollywood as death head colors because death head comes from a Nazi uh, organization called the SS and the Gestapo. Gestapo was referred to as the Order of the Death Head. And the Order of the Death Head, Gestapo in Nazi Germany, symbol was the uh, skull and crossbones, skull and bones. That was their symbol. But to the Germans on the, on the inside, the Gestapo was known, was called the Order of Death Head. And Death Head's colors in Hollywood. I attended a lecture uh, many years ago by a black doctor <clears throat> who worked at Martin Luther King Hospital. And some of my uh, friends in the, in the motion picture industry, black entertainers, called me and said, you really need to be here tonight. You need to come and hear this. It's, a, it's a, going to be a private uh, lecture by uh, a doctor from Chicago who came out here, was, was an actual doctor working at Martin Luther King Hospital, and he was giving a lecture on death head colors. And in it, it was, it was fascinating. Uh, it was a slide presentation at a library, in Santa Monica Library, in a private invitation only. There's only about 25 to 30 people there. And he was explaining the death head colors, why it's black, white, and red and how black, white, and red are used in motion pictures. When someone is going to die or something, someone's going to be killed, those are the three prominent colors that will always be in those scenes. They're called death head colors. They symbolize the darkness of the darkest, uh, the, the most profound presence of evil, red, white, and black. But there's also a significance in terms of the occult with regard to certain genetics? Certain genetics? genetics. Oh, of course, of course. In other words, uh, the red being a, you know, a red-headed person yeah. with certain kinds of, of, of DNA. Oh, I'm sure. I'm and, sure there is and, more and to that. And the black being uh, a, a, a blonde, uh, usually Celtics, a mixture perhaps. I'm sure those. that there is that too, yeah. Uh -huh. it was, the only thing I was saying is that that was very interesting because I remember that night he talked about uh, the, the uh, European Masonic orders and how the Mexican gangs in Los Angeles and around the country use Masonic symbols from a particular Masonic order in Europe, while the black gangs use an opposing symbols and in, in terms and symbols of a different Masonic order in Europe. And, they, and that most likely the, the, the gang members themselves do not realize that these are actually can be traced back to Masonic symbols in Europe. And, and so I believe that the gangs going on in America today are being organized, directed, and financed out of Europe to destroy our culture in America. I think that European Freemasonry is heavily involved in destroying America. 
And you need to understand the whole story about how America was founded and how it was, a, it was founded as a corporation. It's a privately owned corporation. We can you know, talk about that for days on the end. Um, and this is just my opinion, one man's opinion. But I'm going to give you my opinion as to the bottom line on the world today and the stuff that's going on on the earth today. Uh, what we call Illuminati was a, originally uh, a term which is given to us uh, in Spain to um, a religious order in Spain that later on were amalgamated into what we call Jesuits. So the Jesuits are truly Illuminati themselves. Um, and the Vatican, and, and you go well, into that Well, that was what I was going well. to say, yes. I believe that one of the most evil organizations that exist on the earth today and you'd have to have spent all the years with me in libraries and research societies and traveling around the world and talking to other writers, authors, lecturers and teachers and collecting this stuff over a period of 45 to 48 years to understand what I'm telling you. But I believe today the most serious evil organization on the face of the earth is the Vatican. That's my personal opinion. I think if, if the Vatican was done away with off the face of the earth, there would be a shout of liberation heard around the world. <clears throat> because the Vatican, in my opinion, is the, is the bulwark of this dark thing that's happening on the earth. So when you talk about Illuminati, when you talk about the really dark criminal stuff that's going on in the earth, you're talking the Vatican. You're talking the Knights of Malta, which gave us the six men who founded the CIA in America were all Catholics, members of the Knights of Malta. When you begin to look at the banking fraternities in America, like the Bank of America, Union Bank in California, all of these people who founded these banks and today are running the banking establishment are all Knights of Malta, Catholic masonry. So when I hear people talking about the Jews this, the Jews that, and the Jews are responding, I said, no, no, you better go back and do your homework. The Jews have been slaughtered all over, all over Europe by the Vatican. You need to remember that for at least 2,300 years, Rome has dominated Europe. Under the Caesars of Rome and in the 4th century, late 4th century, the Vatican comes into, into being. And the Vatican dominates all of Europe, all the heads of state, all the princes and kings and rulers, all the kings and rulers in Europe ruled by the divine right. It's called the divine right of kings. What are you talking about? Who represents divine to give the king the right? The Pope. The Pope appoints certain families to be over the French. The Pope appoints certain people to be over the Germans and over the British. And so by divine right. Why? Because the Pope represents God. And the Pope says that this family is holy and that they should rule. And therefore they could now say they rule by divine right. And the whole idea of divine goes back to the chalice, you know, and the, the Holy Grail. And in the Catholic Mass, you have the, the priest breaking the bread and then pouring the wine. Well, wine is made from grapes, and wine is red. So it's a red grape wine represents the blood of, of the atonement blood. It's a blood sacrifice. But where does the blood, I mean, where does the wine come from? It comes from grapes, and grapes grow on divine. And that's where we get the concept of the word divine, because it comes from, grapes come from divine. <laughs> so that's where we get the word divine. And once you begin to realize how the Vatican has for over 2,300 years, Rome has dominated Europe, and in 1,600 years, the Vatican has dominated Europe. And Europe for 2,300 years has dominated the earth. So if you want to talk about conspiracies and you want to talk about evil, don't talk about Jews. You better talk about the people who would control Europe for over 2,300 years. Caesar of Rome, the Roman 
Catholic establishment. There's the real story. Now you're getting into mafiosi. Now you're getting into the fraternal orders of Freemasonry out of Europe, Knights of Malta. Now you're getting into the organized crime, Sicily, Corsica, Corsica, and all of the profound drug running, white slavery, murder for hire, Vatican. I mean, even, uh, what was his name, the producer of Godfather, um, what was his name, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Mm -hmm. And Godfather Three, Francis Ford Coppola and Godfather Three, the third one in the series, opens up with Michael Corleone being anointed by the Cardinal in New York to be a member of the Knights of Malta in the Catholic Church in New York. What is he telling you? The connection between the Vatican, the Holy Father, there's nothing holy about the Holy Father. There's nothing holy in Israel. Nothing. There's nothing holy in the Vatican. There is nothing holy in Salt Lake City. There's nothing holy in religion, period. It's a way that the masters, whoever these entities are who are controlling the human race, they have set up certain institutions of learning, of education, religion, and government. That's why I've said you better go back and do your homework on where the history of the world comes from. I don't see the world being run by Jews. I see Jews being used, but you will find that even Rothschild, the, the, uh, the, the Rothschild family who we hear so much about, those Jews who were running Europe. No, if you go back and look at the history of the Rothschilds, you will find that Rothschild represented the Vatican. He was dealing for the Vatican. He was a Vatican banker appointed by the Vatican to deal for them so that the Catholic Church would never be involved in all that terrible stuff going on in banking, we'll let the Jew do it. Then, of course, if, if something comes out, well, it's Jewish, obviously. No, no, it's your money that he was handling. So if you really want to nail down the real enemy to America and then to the earth, I'm telling you, it's only taken me 48 years to get here. I was born and raised Catholic. I mean, I, 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 my whole family were very Catholic in town. We were the most Catholic family in town. But I know history. And I know that the most criminal organization on the face of the earth, in my humble opinion, I, I don't know that much about it, I've just, I've just been looking at it for 48 years, is the Vatican. As far as I'm concerned, it's you. the worst thing that's ever happened to the world, is what's really going on in the Vatican. And that doesn't even bring up the subject of propaganda doing. P2, the propaganda do it, P2 Lodge, that was even mentioned in Godfather 3 twice. There's a Masonic order in, in Europe called Propaganda Due. It's called P2. And it is the, it's connected directly, P2 is connected directly through membership with Opus Dei and the Knights of Malta and the Jesuits. Jesuits, Opus Dei, Knights of Malta, Masonic order, are connected directly to something called Propaganda Due, P2 Lodge of Freemasonry. P2 Lodge of Freemasonry is world famous to people who do research into criminal organizations. And P2 is, is pure, unadulterated, pouring directly out of the trough, Nazism. Underworld organizations, drugs, humans, uh, human trafficking, pornography, violence, underworld organization, it's all P2. They are the ones who are promoting the, uh, the uh, right-wing death squads in Central and South America, Mexico, the drug cartels in Colombia, we're talking Catholic, Knights of Malta, drug cartels, Colombia, um, extraordinary vice, on a, on, a, on a level which it is hard for most humans to, to recognize, and it's all being orchestrated out of the Holy Father and Rome. This is why I've said so many times, there's never going to be a time in the history of this country that America will be saved. I don't believe America can be saved. I truly do not believe that America or the human race, I don't think that, that I'm just, it's just my opinion again, 
But I don't think the human race can be saved. And I don't think America can be saved. Because so many millions of people just love the filth and degeneracy of the world we live in. They love it. They love the Holy Father and all the pomp and glory of, the, of all the politicians and kings and rulers and, and, and the, the pusillanimous pictures of Bush you know, kissing the ring of the Holy, pa Holy Father. What does that look like for Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi in full color on the news, bowing down and curtsying and bowing down and kissing the ring of a Roman pontiff? The men who founded our great nation would throw up with this treason, high crimes and treason against the state by these people who call themselves America's leaders. I'm telling you, the Vatican has given us the mafia, drug running, prostitution, terrorism, child, violence, child, child, child porno pornography, pornography, all of it. And the children that are disappearing. Um, are you familiar with Leo Zagami? Say it again. Leo Zagami. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've okay. heard, I've and, heard and him many he times. And he has talked about when he's gone back into the fold because they tortured him. But yeah. when he was out for a moment talking to us, he talked about underneath the Vatican is a huge reptilian base. I don't know. I wasn't there. But it wouldn't surprise me. Right. I don't know. So there is some kind of link up between the agenda of the Illuminati the Vatican who's heading all of that up and this reptilian rollout that we, that, to get back to where we were talking about yeah. and perhaps this, this so-called um, figure who is, who is taking the throne and the symbolism that you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't shock me. I want to say something about Dan Brown's uh, movies. Um, okay. Angels <laughs> and Demons and um, yeah, and the other um, one. Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code. And now this new one. Is it really called the... Uh, what were, what were I think it's about? called the, the hidden symbol okay. or the secret symbol or something like that. Okay. Which my producer, my producer friend and I were going to do a movie and we were going to call it the hidden secret or the secret uh, symbol. I understand. And now there's... Uh, Dan Brown comes out. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I have no respect whatsoever for Dan Brown. None. I have no respect for the man at all. Because as far as I'm concerned, he's plagiarized and stolen. And I don't like people who steal because I've had it happen to me. He stole from Holy Blood, Holy oh, Grail, is that right? Absolutely. He stole the whole thing. Mm -hmm. He stole the whole thing. Uh, that whole story, Dan Brown and the Da Vinci Code and all the other angels and demons, all of that he stole. Now let me tell you what I think. This is just my opinion. I think Dan Brown is a plant. I think he's nothing more than a paid lackey and a plant. Uh, I am totally sure that the real Illuminati, whoever these guys are at the top of the world, use people like Dan Brown who don't mind making a lot of money to become a whore. And I think that's all he is. In my humble opinion, I think Dan Brown's just a whore. He's just taking the money and, and uh, sleeping with the enemy. Because I think what he's doing is he is nothing more than presenting what his masters behind the scenes want the public. And so they will spend all kinds of money telling you about how wonderful Dan Brown is and go, oh my God, he's so brilliant and intelligent and all this silly nonsense. And the people who are so used to sucking up to Hollywood will believe that stuff. Me, I've been around Hollywood 44, 48 years. I know this stuff backwards and forwards. I think Dan Brown is nothing more than a front for a very powerful Masonic order in Europe, which is trying to lay the foundations for this Novas Ordo Cyclonum, dawn of a new day, sunrise thing that's coming. I think Dan Brown is nothing more than a whore taking the money and making it look like he's the one that came up with this when in point of fact, no, it was stolen. It was stolen from three men in England, Bajan, Lee, and Lincoln. Back in 1980, there was a book put out and it became a New York bestseller. 
for many, many months. It was a top of the line bestseller called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. And the three authors were three British authors, Bajit, Lee, and Lincoln. And they outlined for the first time the story of the Knights Templar Masonic Order in Europe, the Knights of the, of the, Holy, of the Holy Grail, um, the, 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 the whole concept of a Masonic secret society operating in the world. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised that they weren't uh, better informed about this than what they let us know. I don't think they just might chance happen upon it. I think they already knew something and they were putting it out in the book in such a way as to start people thinking about it. But nonetheless, Bajit, Lee, and Lincoln were extraordinarily brilliant writers and their research was impeccable. I mean, these guys nailed it down and even today around the world, uh, people who are knowledgeable in these subjects will agree Bajit Lee and Lincoln did one hell of a job. They, they had their, their, their homework done. Okay, well, I have one, one last question. Um, and this has been an amazing journey to take with you. And, and I, I hope that we can go down that, that road a little further in the, in the future. And I think that uh, people that are watching this really need to get up to speed with, with you know, following your other work, your previous work. Uh, hopefully attending any conferences you're speaking at. I believe that you are coming forward. You just spoke um, right, you know, you had no preparation whatsoever and you spoke at our, our Awake and Aware uh, Camelot conference here in Los Angeles uh, just last weekend. And it's really an honor to be here with you. Um, but I want to ask you if you think that this Illuminati and, and what's going on in the United States right now do you really think that they are going to be successful in taking down this country? Because it's clear that there is someone protecting you, there's a group protecting you. They certainly have some amazing powers, as you've demonstrated. Do you think that these powers, these Illuminati people behind the scenes, are going to be successful at taking down the United States yes, government? Yes, I totally agree, yes. That's what okay. I think. And, and is that, I mean, you do have people beh behind the scenes that are protecting you. You've demonstrated that time and time again on this video. Right. Um, they are therefore, in theory, protecting us here, Project Hamlet, and other of our witnesses and so on, because we are all talking about the same thing from different angles That's and right. getting our research together and right. so on. But in essence, what I'm wondering is there are white hats operating as you know and as we know because yeah. we have been interacting with those people from time to time. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that these people can be stopped? No. You don't? No, I do not. Okay. I categorically say no. I do I not believe there is any reasonable um, evidence of, of anything of hope for America or for the world. That's my personal opinion. I think that the light at the end of the tunnel is a train coming. There's no doubt in my mind, for myself, I do not believe America or the world at large is going to be able to extricate itself out of this situation. No, I do not believe it's possible. And the reason why is because the people are too stupid. They're too ill-informed, ignorant, ill-informed, unread, self-centered, egotistical, materialistic, and downright stupid. And they don't care. Basically speaking, people don't care. Ludwig von Mises, in one of his books, the great uh, European economist, Ludwig von Mises said, and, that was, and he's right on, as far as I'm concerned, he said that every age and in every country, the people of every nation have always supported a dictator. The people have always supported a dictator, and they always will. There's never been a time in the history of the human race that you can show me where the people of a nation rose up and demanded their freedom, liberty, and justice for all. Not even in America. 97% of the male population in America at the time of the American Revolution did nothing. Only 3% took up arms against the British masters and gave us a modicum of freedom. 
But happily, that will never happen again. America is finished. Did his father of the girlfriend that you had, when he spoke to you, did he tell you that we're doomed? I mean, why would he call it the UFO? And why would he tell you all these things if we were just going down the toilet? Did he tell you that we were doomed? Did he tell you there was a war and that we were going to lose no matter what? No. Do you, okay, let, let me phrase this. Do you realize that you, your mission and your call to arms, which is really coming right on the verge here, I mean, I think that the new release of V is, is sort of a signal to the populace, a last-ditch attempt to wake the people up as to what may be coming. And basically, you have a mission, we have a mission, and I'm sorry, you know, Jordan Maxwell, and, and you're a brilliant man, but you were put here for a reason. You have incredible force behind you. The man who spoke to you all those years ago and told you, that you would have a journey is certainly behind you now and I would say that judging from everything that's gone on with Project Camelot that we have some of the same force behind us and I have to say that the fact that you're sitting here today and you're talking to us and you're alive and well and that you're coming forward at this moment and talking about things with, with really no holds barred is indication to me that there is something going on that's more than you you have dreamed of in your philosophy. So I want to thank you very much. Well, I, I, I want to answer that question. I do not believe America can be saved. I, hear I do not believe the human race can be extricated or saved from what is coming. I do not believe that my mission here is to save anybody. I believe what I am doing is to help those who want to know those handful of people who are awakening and who sincerely spiritually understand the dynamics of what's going on and who want to know and want to change and want the protection of the spirit that's a small modicum of people a very small niche I do not believe America can be saved I'm doing what I'm doing only to help those who want to know Obviously, you are a person who is trying to wake up people, okay? And sometimes there has to be a severe word told to the people in order to actually get them to awaken. And I do believe that this is part of your mission. But I will thank you for, from Project Camelot. I hope that you are wrong about your final judgment on the human race. I do too. And, and I'm sure you do too. Absolutely. That's why I'm trying to do whatever I can to help those who want to know, and hopefully it may spread. Thank you. Thank you.